Hello everyone, I'm Paula Marin. I'm the Director of Market Research and Insights for PISA for the Latin American region. And today, it's a pleasure for me to share with you our latest affluent consumer trend. First of all, let's see how consumers are adjusting to the pandemic life. Of course, 2020 was a different year for all of us and the affluent segment also had to adapt. They transformed the lifestyle. They also had to pause their spending in travel, in entertainment. However, in different studies that we have done through 2020, we have been seeing that the intention to resume travel, to go out again, is higher compared to the non-affluent segment. And we have identified three main areas where the affluent segment has been focusing during 2020 and 2021. First one is moving to their second home to decompress and enjoy nature. So many of these consumers had already a second home outside of the city. They left their apartments, their houses in the city and moved to this uh, second home to be closer to nature. We also saw consumers then buying a second home, moving or changing their home to a, an area outside the city. The second one is about remodeling their home spaces, especially home offices and outdoor areas like gardens, and also updating their appliances. And the third one is about the well-being, so focusing on the wellness culture, both physical and mental, looking for healthy options in food, exercise, vitamins, meditation, and sports. Now, we have identified 10 big trends that were impacting the affluent segment. And during 2020, we identified that six trends were even more relevant. The first one is about personalization. So the affluent segment before, even before 2020, they were rediscovering new hobbies, new areas of interest, painting, you know, cultivating orchids, uh, piloting airplanes. And during 2020, they also rediscovered new hobbies or new areas of interest. What this means is that we cannot treat this segment and one homogeneous group that only likes one activity. There is a new hyperfragmentation of interests and hobbies, which calls for personalization. The second one is speed and immediacy. This is related to that hyper awareness of all the digital solutions, also very impacted during 2020, where consumers saw new products and services that provided top service that they could have immediately and these high expectations that they experience, they transfer into all categories. So the impact of these for any of us with a new product, with a new service, is that the user experience has to provide speed and immediacy as they are expecting from all the categories and industry. The third one is this giving back to society. Also, in, you know, 2020 made the consumer feel more like part of you know, the community, the world. They are looking for even for brands with purpose, brands that help, and they also want to help. They want, in, in any way they, they can, they want to give back to their community, to their society. This for one is about shaking up. This segment is the one that receives higher number of communication, advertising, offer of products. So if we really, need to stand up, we need to provide something very, very different uh, to really cut their attention. This, the fifth one is back to origins, and this is a connection with the local culture. So 2020 also made them think of the importance of supporting the local economy, the local brands. It doesn't mean that they are not, uh, they will not continue buying a luxury international brands, of course, they will do, but they will also support local brands and local businesses. And then this last one is about experiential living, and is in this new age of innovation, it's very important for consumers to create, to be part of what they produce. 
And this is why all these new, you know, cooking classes or, um, I don't know, music classes are now very, very relevant, both digital due to the pandemic, but also in person when possible. So all these trends have generated many, many tensions and tensions means insights. These insights have impacted how the consumer behaves. And what we see is that these consumers, the affluent consumers, are in a transitional mode. They are changing from, you know, they are opening their minds to our new experiences and growing distance from material things. So I'll, I'll highlight some of these transitions that we saw. For example, from material possessions now to more experience, from accumulation to management, from exclusivity to uniqueness, from being recognized as a group to looking for individual differentiation, again to our point about personalization, from the, the rational thinking about money to more of the emotional thinking about memories. So if you see the strength in this segment that is the most profitable segment is still there, but how we communicate with them is different from economical growth to personal and spiritual development, from luxury as a way to convey status, to luxury as comfort and value for money, and from living in a closed bubble to be open to experiences to other realities, even within uh, their country. Also, what we have seen is that purchase behaviors for affluent consumers uh, have to change, uh, during restrictions. However, in terms of intentions, when markets open and economies start to recover, we see that they have high intent to go out again to restaurants, to continue buying appliances for this, for this home improvement in their first home or for the second home that they are buying, for apparel and shoes, sporting goods, given that new trend of the importance or the higher importance of well-being and exercise for car-related products and for electronics. In terms of payment methods, the preferred payment method for the affluent consumer in Latin America is debit and credit above cash, but it's super interesting how new payment methods like digital wallets already have 22%, providing us with this um, openness of the affluent segment towards new technologies. And the affluent segment, same as total population, they increase the usage of e-commerce. This segment already did online purchases before the pandemic, but frequency for them increased during the pandemic. And the devices that they use to buy online are mainly mobile and computer. Now, as I was mentioning, this segment is very, very open to new technologies and smart technology is already part of their lives. Around half of them already own a smart TV and we already have some consumers with a smart home product or with smart watch. And this is very interesting. This is a ranking of benefits that we did during 2020 for the affluent segment, we evaluated 64 benefits among the affluent segment in the region. And the top benefit is very interesting because the top benefit is a combination of everyday benefits with travel benefits. Why? Because the affluent consumers are now at home. They want to enjoy something now. So this is represented by the everyday benefit. But as I mentioned at the beginning, they are very open to travel again when they can. Their intention to go out again to travel uh, is higher among this segment versus the non-affluent. Some examples of the everyday benefits that rank high are discounts in bill payment or subscriptions, physical protection of items like cell phones, and online protection including identity theft and fraud. And on the travel benefit, international medical emergency services, 
trip cancellation reimbursement and compensation for lost luggage. So to finish, here is our information. We are here to help you. Please, if you need more information, don't hesitate to uh, contact your executive team to learn more about uh, what we have. And for those of you interested a little bit more on the methodologies that we use uh, for the different studies where we took the information for this uh, presentation, here we have uh, more details. So with this, I thank you very much for your time and hope to see you or to talk to you again soon. Thank you.